Gore Chad. It's Cole here. I'm here again on Wednesday to fill in. Uh, and this week's topic is deals with fictional characters and um, what fictional char character or characters do we relate to in terms of gender. Um, I had a hard time with this one, to be honest with you. I, since coming out of genderqueer, I mainly just read nonfiction. Um, I don't really read a lot of fiction these days. Um, but... I did think of something um, that I read a few years back, um, which is uh, Tipping the Velvet uh, by Sarah Waters. There is a character in Tipping the Velvet uh, whose name is Nan. And this uh, Tipping the Velvet is based in the late 1800s, um, I believe. Um, and it's basically just Nan's, Nan is the main character. And it's sort of her journey through her sexual, finding out what her sexual orientation is and also finding out what her gender identity is um, in the late 1800s, which was difficult. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of reasons why I relate to her, um, but I'll go ahead and give you just kind of a synopsis of the gender part of it um, because it's really long and has a lot of parts and it's, you should read the book for sure. I think there's a movie also. Um, but Nan is super, super innocent and lives with her family at the beginning of the book. And um, she's dating him, a guy and trying to make that work, but there's just something missing for her. There's no chemistry there, etc. Um, so she actually lives with her family. They're like oyster, they like own an oyster bar or something. <laughs> like, it's pretty funny. Anyway, um, so she goes to a show with her dad and sees this gorgeous drag king. Sort of, it wasn't called a drag king, but um, a performer, a uh, female born performer dressed, you know, dressed in drag and basically singing a song about like being in love with, with this girl. Uh, so her name's Kitty. So she sees Kitty perform and she is just blown away. I mean, she's never seen, you know, gender bending or anything, you know, or anything like that. So, um, so after seeing that, she becomes friends with Kitty. Um, she sort of like, keeps coming back to the show and seeing her, and there's an obvious like romantic connection there for her. Um, and they become friends, and eventually um, Kitty actually asks her to go on tour with her, and um, they begin this like sort of, I don't know, relationship, I guess you can say. Um, at first just platonic for a long time and then eventually more but um what's interesting about this particular character um, is that as the movie progresses um, she starts to herself experiment with um, gender bending and dressing in drag and etc um, I think at first to sort of be closer closer uh, to Kitty uh, but eventually she realizes how much she loves being in drag and how great it feels to perform um, with Kitty you know in this fashion in this queer fashion um, eventually things didn't work out with them it was pretty terrible but you can read the book if you want to know what happened between them but um even afterwards she continued to dress in drag perform in drag um, she had a pretty some pretty terrible jobs but again you should read it <laughs> but what I relate to her the most about gender is that it was a journey for her which it is for me um, I also related to her fluidity um, in her gender and the fact that she never really she wasn't she didn't identify as trans at all I mean her character didn't ever have any type of dysphoria or anything. She was just about as comfortable in a dress um, as she was in full full on drag. Um, so I guess it was um, you know, a gender queer character, which I really enjoyed. Um, I also relate to her because um, of her ability, or because of how she had to come out to her family and. Uh, how she rejected the gender roles assigned to her because she had a nice guy that you know she could have settled down with but she decided to go on her own way and, and do what she wanted in the end I think it it, it suited her well and, and, and it, ended, it ended pretty well for her in the end um, 
I also relate to her in terms of how um, how naive she was before experiencing um, Kitty's gender bending. Um, I felt similar. Also, I felt really sheltered. Like I hadn't been exposed to um, to a lot of gender variants before. So I think that was another way that I related to her. Um, but those are, that's really the only character that I feel like in terms of gender I've related to in a non-fiction or in a fiction setting. Um, maybe I should, I'm definitely going to watch the other videos and, and see if I can get into some more fiction because lately it's just been all queer theory <laughs> for a couple years. Uh, but I do love this this story. It's fantastic, and um, it's at the film is three parts, I believe. Um, the book is long, isn't doesn't look as long as the movie is, but um, <laughs> uh, anyway, it's a it's a great story. Lots of really really great characters in the film in the book and in the film. Um, so yeah, you guys should check it out. Sorry for the short video this week, um, but uh, I wish I had more fictional characters that I could draw from, but. This is the one that I could remember that was genderqueer and things like that. So anyway, you guys have a great week. Bye-bye.